For a while now, my daughter and I have been talking about molding our own crayons with the broken bits that we have laying around. Having a bunch of these hearts kicking around as a demo here in the showroom, she told me, hey, I want to do one of these. So with the time and the motivation and the available resources, we went ahead and tackled the project. So I want to show you. For this project, we're going to use a piece of 2.75 by 2.75 by one inch thick aluminum. I use 6061T6. I went ahead and cut my block to size and faced it off. So for the actual mold, we're only gonna be using two tools. We're gonna to use a quarter inch flat end mill, three flute for aluminum, and we're gonna use a quarter inch ball end mill. And this will be for the surfacing of the actual mold and the inside radius of that spill tray. And this will be used for the roughing. For this project, I'll be using two tools from our aluminum end mill starter set. Tool number 37371 is a two flute ball end mill. It's a quarter inch in diameter. Tool number 37370 is a three flute quarter inch flat end mill. I'm not gonna focus on the CAD aspect of, for this project, but I'll show you what I did for all the tool path creation in the CAM environment. I, I'm using Fusion 360. You're welcome to use any software that suits your needs. The first thing I did in this project is add a manual comment just to give me a stock size reference, just so when I'm out at the machine, I don't have to guess, I don't have to look at the G-code and figure it out, it's right there. The first thing I did is a roughing strategy using that flat quarter inch end mill, just to bulk out material. And for this one, I'm leaving 20 thousandths of an inch of radial stock, and I'm spinning the tool at 10,000 RPMs, feed rate of 60 inches a minute, 100 thousandths step over, and 125,000 step down for the major roughing. I come back in shortly thereafter to do a fine roughing strategy. Again, spinning the spindle at 10,000 RPMs, cutting feed rate steps up to 80 inches a minute, and the fine step down of this toolpath is 12 thou and 5 tenths. Again, leaving 20 thou radial stock to leave. I do a quick pass here to clean up the, the corners of the flats in preparation of the uh, contour operation later on that's gonna clean up the sides of that, the spillover cavity. The nuts and bolts of this operation is just a scallop tool path that run, again, 10,000 RPMs. This time I'm running 128 inches a minute so I'm, since I'm just taking that 20 thou off the sides. And I've got a step down of 14 thousandths. After that one runs, I come back with a quick contour to clean up the corners of that spillover cavity, running 10,000 RPMs at 40 inches a minute. This one I'm running a little slower on the feed rate because that tool is so long and has a lot of stick out, and I wanted to get a nice surface finish on that, the inside corners there. Plus right here in the corners, I get a pretty good tool engagement, so I kind of run it slow through the whole tool path. A step down on this one is 40 thousandths of an inch. I've already got this part cut to size and faced, and we only really just need to probe it. Since I'm only making a couple, I didn't worry about building a fixture for it. So I'm just gonna probe each one as I go using the built-in probing routines in PathPilot. So now that we have the mold cut, the next step is to crush crayons up of whatever color you choose and dump them in here. In this video, we're using a toaster oven, but at home, I use my regular oven. Make sure to put a 
piece of tin foil down at the bottom to catch any drippage. We run it about 100 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes to melt the crayons down. And once they fully melt down into the cavity of the mold, turn off the oven, let it sit for another 20 minutes and cool off before transferring it to the freezer. In the freezer, it'll fully solidify and shrink a little bit to pop out of the mold. Oh, sweet, it's separating. <laughs> Is it? Let's see. Oh, you can tell it shrunk. Yeah. Okay, can you pop that out? Cool. Looks good. Okay. Overall, my daughter and I found this project to be a wild success. I think the next step will be to add different geometries to this mold, maybe make a star or something else. And ultimately, I wanna fixture out a bunch of them, see if I can make eight or 10 or 12 of them all at one time on the 1100 MX. My daughter and I had a great time doing this project. We hope to inspire you and your family to do more similar projects or maybe just spark something different entirely. Keep an eye out on our user forums for the project files for this project and other projects that we're working on.